Congratulations, you found the Twin Cities hit show. Very well. Where do I begin? Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I'm part of you. My mind is in your mind. Reach for this one. <laughs> and now, a real hit show. You saw the truth, Rusty. Live from the Twin Cities. And isn't the universe beautiful? It's the Twin Cities hit show. Remember how you feel right now. Put it inside you and live by it. Let's get this hit show started. No traffic at all for me today. Zero. Really? It's been a struggle last week. <laughs> they had that road construction, I guess, 35W. That was a sea of parked cars getting to the deck show, which was a fun show. It was a fun show. It was that was a breeze for me. I had no traffic problem. I don't know why you guys had so many traffic. Because problems. you live next door to the restaurant not, that they do the patio show I have from. To take a car there. You do. Yeah, because he's like lazy. A three mile walk. You see, it's because he's lazy. He doesn't have to take a car you there. He's decided to. And still been there faster than me. Yo, yeah, oh yeah. Anyway, today was a breeze, and it's Monday. Hey, it's the Twin Cities hit show. Hope your Monday's going well. I am Rusty Gatenby. I'm Chuck Gallup. I'm Miss Shannon. And you guys had a good weekend, I hear. I yes. saw some Facebook postings. Yeah. yeah it was fun. a busy weekend, but it was a good weekend, including the fact that uh, Chuck and I had a comedy show that we both participated in over at the New Hope Cinema Grill. So thanks to everybody that came out and saw us and had a good time and laughed. Chuck didn't mess it up? No. <laughs> <laughs> Despite my attempts, I didn't. He kind of did try, but it was all fine. <laughs> I did my damnedest. You did not. Did you try I and mess did. up Miss Shannon? He, well, he can't mess me up. He tried to mess himself up. Oh. So he's the one that had to go first, and they got there all late. So I, was, I was all <laughs> inside my head, yo. Yes. He, had a, he decided he was going to have complicated dinner plans. So he got there. Normally, and this is every comedian's a little different, yeah. but you normally try to get to the venue with enough time that you have kind of a chance to kind of decompress and kind of get your head right, just sit out. Yeah. Rush, Chuck. He comes running in like, oh, I'm, okay, uh, it's just long. process is just to show up. <laughs> hey, Shannon, you obviously don't know me because I never decompress. So showing up really does not help. <laughs> He's all way. freaking out. He's all like, I got to get my camera. And where's it? And I'm like, I'm like, breathe, baby. Just breathe. It's like, you know, we tell jokes. Let's relax. But then once he got on stage, he yeah. was fine. I'm always fine on stage. I had a grand mal seizure walking in. It was crazy. And then I, I, I walked in. Blah, 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 blah. Right. And I, don't, and I don't function that way. So I'm like, can you take that over there? I got to I'm going to sit here and chill out. <laughs> well, we went to Broadway Pizza, which was delicious and, and close, like four miles away. But, you know, you order pizza. It takes a while. And mm. Yeah. Yeah. So, so he comes in. It's a blitzkrieg of activity. and then it, But once we got on stage, everything was fine. What was the crowd thing. like? Is there enough people that know and go to comedy and still in the yeah, Twin Cities? Yeah. You know, there are. And, there, and we're, you know, this is... There's a reason why this is one of the best comedy markets in the country is that, you know, they're, you know, usually really smart crowds. You know, they're, you know, they're very into it. It's nice to be able to work someplace like the New Hope Cinema Grill. It is, you know, has a, uh, a standard comedy night. So they do during the, um, the fall and the winter, they'll do two nights a week. And then on the, in the summer, because people are busy and they don't need to, you know, they're not the club that's going to try and compete with everybody else. They just do one night a week, so one show. So mm -hmm. it's something that people can really... Um, uh, just, just look forward to, and it's it's in their on their side of town. They don't have to go far. They have a great menu and nice drink specials afterwards because oh, cool. they have a companion bar. And, and it's a big room. It's oh. a really big room. Really cool. It, yeah. yeah, it's a really big room. And so because it's a it's a theater because that's what they do there the rest of the time is they show films. And so it's a theater that actually the the other thing about it is even more extended because you have actual tables because people can order full dinner menu you know while you're there. So it's a it's a really good room and, and I found this out I didn't know this so they have a like a points like a uh, one of those those <laughs> New, Ho New Hope Cinema Grill in general has a points thing like a little hey every time you come see a movie you get certain points oh, like a I rewards see. club gotcha. and the comedy shows actually get included as well for the rewards club like one of the ladies that came to the show said that she's like yeah I noticed on my you were on our list of things I get points for so I'm like well I'm well done I was, <laughs> I was, was awesome. two points away from a free soda <laughs> right. the only reason I'm here yeah, so and I'm why like, is that you. guy having a grand mal seizure it's yeah. not comfortable to watch 
I thought you got like a toaster or something. Like a no, soda? You get, oh, I would totally. You get free. Yeah. You get free tickets to movies and, and other comedy shows, and so they got points towards their free something down the road. So that was nice. Nice. It a was couple, fun. I had a gal I went to high school with came. Yes. So it's always fun to see these people you haven't seen in like twenty. Oh, I saw you had a show, so I thought I'd come. And... Or when somebody says, hey, because they have one of those billboards out front that, like, you know, it's like the first time that my picture ended up on one of those things, that was like one of the most surreal moments of my career. I'm just like, whoa, all right, neat. So the shit just got real. The fact that you can, like, drive up, you know, up the street and see my picture pop up on one of those electronic marquees, I'm excited about that kind of thing. It's really cheesy, but it's fun. So we had a great That's time. Cool. So we had two other comedy friends come down and do some sets as well that were there. And um, I still I want to see you do your stuff. When oh, yeah. when are you next? Before? Uh, the next time, if you're in town, July Fourth weekend, I uh. am performing at Acme Comedy Company that Friday. Um, and then next month, I'm doing a three day stint. I'm headlining at the Joke Junk Comedy Club in St. Paul. So if oh. you wanted to do it again, since I since that's my show, I could. Get Chuck on the bill and get him a set as well, and we can make it a show thing. All right. And you know, we'll just you know, and then you can see both of us in yeah. the same place, so All we right. can work on that. Maybe like on the Thursday show or something. I'd like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I had to cancel my Saturday show. I'm I'm opening opening, uh, I'm seeing for John Conroy. Yes. Down in Goonies, but it's Father's Day, and with this whole divorce thing, I remembered. Oh, I get custody of the kids at four thirty on Saturday. Yeah. So I had to get someone to cover my Saturday ah. stuff. So I'm still being down there Friday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, oh, worst problems. You got to go hang out with your kids. I Actually, I've, <laughs> I've done that. I've had, yeah. I mean, a big day for, you know, for comedy is also Mother's Day. So I've had you know, things where I've done stuff all day. And then at night, I had a show, you know, or something yeah. like that. And I yeah. mean, that's just part of the gig when you're a working comedian. The, the other holiday that I don't get off. And it doesn't matter most of the time is that don't expect to get Valentine's Day off. Uh, you don't. That's a you know yeah. that's usually a big comedy show yeah. you Take know event. Yeah. And then there's also like New Year's, New Year's Eve. Yeah. yeah. You know if you're thinking hey I'm gonna go rent you know no you should be on stage someplace if yeah. this is what you do you should be looking for a show so you just get used to it it's like any job if you work in the service industry you're probably not gonna get a bunch of these certain holidays off if you're a comedian you're probably working. I no. finally retired from law enforcement where I work every single New Year. I get like a year off, and now I get into comedy where I work every single New Year. You know what? I don't complain because when I, you know, I used to have a boring job where I didn't work New Year's when I start New Year's Eve. Then you got a drink, and then there's no. The hangover that was because that's when oh, you got to kiss strangers at nah, midnight. Um, oh, so, but um, that's every night. <laughs> I am um, when I still worked in uh, at the hip hop radio station, and so you would end up. Am seeing these New Year's Eve's events, and so being one of the ones that's not drinking when you're in one oh, of those yeah. situations, oh, yeah. that's a lot more stressful and less fun than the first year that I transitioned and I did a comedy show where I showed up and I probably told jokes at like eight nine o'clock and then maybe like helped count down to midnight. <laughs> that was I'm like I would much rather tell jokes than sit here and be all like, hey, everybody, and try and keep the party going and keep track of the champagne toast for everybody yeah. and just people that don't normally go out, all the amateurs are out on those kind of holidays, that's a pain in the ass. So I'll go and tell jokes, and you guys are all welcome to come see me. And for you, Chuck, evidently the uh, mistletoe belt buckle never goes out of style. <laughs> yeah, no, you wear that 24-7. I have had a, different forms of herpes. I'm on a rotating basis about every week. Okay. I'm on Simplex oh, 51 right now. Right. Okay, good for you. So, Did you guys, uh, first, you maybe you had something. So I'm sorry, were you going to bring up the lady who's, who was who's white but then just turned, turned black? Yes, and now she's I was going to get to okay. that. First, All I right. wanted to finish up with the weekend because gotcha. for those folks who were not at your comedy show... They were walking the dinosaurs. <laughs> oh. See what I did there? Yeah. Well Very played. nicely done. Very nice. Uh, Hollywood is surprised by Jurassic World. And uh, they knew it was going to make, uh, you know, be number one at the box office, probably. Yes. But they were saying it should make $100 million in its opening weekend. Well, it. I mean, I've never seen Hollywood get off by that much. It made two hundred and four million domestically, and wow. it's grossed over five hundred million worldwide. And in that its opening estimate weekend. was was downplayed too. They were yeah. like, you know, they didn't think it would be five. I think they're up by two hundred million on a worldwide. Yeah. So they really missed it. Wow. So I mean, it was. I mean, one. I think it helped itself because there nobody else bl- you know, broke. You know, had a movie that came out this weekend. Like the things it was competing against were things that people. But, have Probably already saw though too. San Andreas though had that same favor. Yeah, it did not do this number. I think it had it, it, enough time had gone by, fourteen years. So there is a new set of teenagers 
that are interested in these images and like, ooh, cool. Right. And then there's enough warm fuzzy for the parents who just got rid of the bad taste from the third Jurassic <laughs> Yeah, the Park. third one was a, can we get Another a do-over? Yeah. Really? I never saw it. I, I mean, I liked the first one. Never moved beyond that. The first yeah. two were fine. Well, you're good. Yeah. You're good. Yeah. You're ready now. for That's, That's kind of what I heard. Yeah. What's the rating? Is it PG-13? I don't remember. It is. And oh, I do feel like there was one of the few... Like, uh, my friend was trying to figure out what he could do from a family perspective. So there wasn't anything out this weekend that was little kid related. But at least it was something that you could go, well, mom, dad, and the 12-year-old probably could all go and see the same movie. And I think that helped it as well. Oh, so yeah. That you could go out and, and lots of people could see it. It was right on the edge. I had to double check and go, is this PG-13? It's getting close a little, to R-rated. Yeah. Okay. But so was Jurassic Park. That scared okay. the crap out of a, a lot of Little kids. kids. Yeah. 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 It What's has a couple of nightmare scenes in it where you can be like, now I can't sleep. Thanks a lot. Yeah. I think it's interesting. I'm a big Chris, Pat, uh, Chris Pratt oh, fan. He's, he's I, solid now. I had the hots for him before when he was still chunky Chris Pratt. I was yeah. fine with that. I yeah. thought he was adorable. So now that he's like hot Chris Pratt, I'm like, <gasps> it's like a present just got unwrapped again. It's fine. But now, you know, he does have his Guardians of the Galaxy. That's still going to come. He has more roles that are coming with that. We have years to wait, though, for that. Yeah, so that's going to come out. I think that's that all, is all well and good. I think what I'm concerned about now is after Jurassic World comes across and it does so well. Can he play Indiana Jones now that he's supposed to be playing Indiana Jones? I would say is, yes. Is he believable as a whole other oh, franchise character oh. uh, like that? Two words for you. Okay. Harrison Ford. Yeah. Star Wars. Indiana Jones. That's two. And I do think people can do two. So the same thing as uh, Robert Downey Jr. He's Tony Stark as Iron Man and Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. That's two. Yeah. Can you do? Can you be the franchise lead for three franchises? Can you do Guardians of the Galaxy, and then I can suspend disbelief again, and now you're in Jurassic Park, dude, and then uh, I suspend a third time, and now I can see you as Indiana Jones. Is he that mm -mm, actor? Mm -mm. I think that's where can. I'm concerned. Can he do all three? I think so. And I think uh, you haven't seen Jurassic World yet, right? Right. He's almost the same guy as Guardians of the Galaxy, just like down a couple of the notches. So he's going to be like Will Smith. It's just, th <laughs> this is what you seem like. So if you can put a, con uh, a costume on him that just ha and then just have the words come out, Chris Pratt, yeah. you're cool. Yeah. I just right. don't buy that in, uh, Harrison Ford can be replaced in any way. I've just never... I know, you know, all these movies okay. and Bond. Look at James Bond. We've had, what, five James Bonds. Yeah. But I don't see that transporting in the same fashion. It is such a Harrison Ford part. I am a little, I, I kind of agree with you that it'd be different if it was, he was uh, not playing the exact same character, because I think that that helps in, you know, going, like the transition from Jurassic Park to Jurassic World. It's not like he's going, well, now he's the Jeff Goldblum mm -hmm. character. Uh -huh. he he's not, you know, it's a whole different character. And in Guardians of the Galaxy, nobody knew who Star-Lord was yeah, before yeah. he was I read comics, and I'm still like, wait a minute, i got to go back and check the canon of this series. I don't remember. Um, but Indiana Jones, I do think it's a little a, more of a stretch because we do have such a beloved character that's in it. So how, you know, is there going to be this continual comparison? And now people are like, ah, I don't know so much about the whole thing. So I'm curious to see how they Well, I think the other thing that. that's going to help is that they are so staggered because we're not going to see Guardians we won't see it next summer. No, Sunday after. I mean, yeah. summer after. So now oh some God. years have I gone by. In Jurassic Chris World, Pat. obviously there's going to be a sequel. Yep. You can't make $500 million and not, not have a sequel. Exactly. So there will be a sequel. Here's, a, here's just a real quick moment from Jurassic World. Think it'll scare the kids? The kids? This will give the parents nightmares. Is that good? It's fantastic. <laughs> Will it scare the kids? The kids. It'll scare the parents. Nice. So, and then that's... Scary. Yeah. The prices will scare the parents. Holy so, crap. of course, uh, now they're going with the science thing. It, <laughs> is this... Are these uh, dinos uh, science based on any sort of science? And Pick it, it apart and then ask me if I care. That's what yeah, <laughs> I got yeah. to do. Well, a couple of things I thought were interesting. Here's from a Los Angeles uh, science, scientist. Is he a paleontologist? I don't know. He's an expert in dinos, but here's what he said. This is about as scientifically accurate as your average science fiction flick, which is to say not particularly. <laughs> um, but there are some things to like about it, even from a science perspective. Just like taking a stroll through the woods 65 million years ago. 
We met up with Dr. Habib at the Natural History Habib. Museum in Los Angeles. He says the movie generally does a good job with dinosaur anatomy, even though they could not use their hands and feet the way they do on screen. The way because we know for sure. They run, the way in which it looks when an animal jumps, the muscle bulges, the way in which the feet interact with the ground, all look really good. You just went and made a new dinosaur? Probably not a good idea. Yeah, I always wondered how they could tell just from bones and such how they would run or sound. Isn't that weird? I always yeah. love it when they go back and they start asking scientists questions about science fiction, you know, things. Because they're still fiction, remember? Because you don't get it from the, from the geek side of, of things, I'll tell you. Like, I always think it's funny because when you do a fantasy book, you can't fact check it because it's all whatever craziness lived in your head anyway. But when you do science fiction, especially something that's supposed to be based, like, on hard science fiction, yeah. then there's people going, well, that would never really happen. Yeah, I know. I, you know don't fact check it that much because it happens especially with all of the space genres with the the interstellars and the yeah. those things where they're going well that wouldn't that's not how it would work well, okay i know i know you know so that's why everybody's a geek about something science geek simmer down i i'm amazed how they figure out the colors and all that stuff <laughs> i mean like how do you know that this thing was green by or based right. on a yeah. bone yeah. there's got to be some sort of yeah. reasoning they some found. genome this blah because dna that so that that is one of the things the doctor did go on to say in that story is the velociraptors. Mm -hmm. I know these because the I velociraptors would, yeah. uh, they would have feathers of some sort. Oh yeah, and yeah. Hollywood chose not to do that because they don't look as they don't look scary cool <laughs> with feathers. <laughs> Having a really mean chicken chase you is just not <laughs> as effective. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, Interstellar made a big deal about hiring all these physicists and scientists yes. to make that real. Yes, I don't know. I, I'm like glad to, you enjoyed it, though, Rusty. It's on I my list of things it. to do. I did. As long as you're happy. I would, uh, my buddy was next to me, and I did a few times go, really? Really? <laughs> at the dialogue? I'm but like, I do that at rom-coms. when I, I'm like, yeah. nobody would say well, that. You're ones. not in love like that. Why did you say that? <laughs> yeah, <I'm> bad <laughs> So do you actually watch rom? I can't even stomach any of them. I watch them every once in a while. I'll power through a rom com, but rom, you know, romantic comedies are not my forte. I like explosions and and you know, I'm a sci fi fantasy girl. You guys know that. By the so. way, did you hear about that uh, satellite that landed on a meteor that was supposed to do research for yes. British scientists? No, and it, it was landed good... in the shadows. So the solar, the battery went down because it relied on solar energy. Right. Well, it just came back to life. Ah, because it finally rotated through. It, it got yeah. close mm -hmm. enough to the sun uh -huh. that seven months later, it logged back on and said, hello, I'm here. And they're all like, holy crap. <laughs> you, <laughs> still oh, God, like, you still work. Oh, thank God, you still work. Good morning. Uh, what's happening? <laughs> In fact, I don't know. I mean, they showed the text messages. Hello, I'm awake. How long have I been asleep? Was the first message from the satellite. That's because we creepy. just put too much effort into making things sound realistic. Yeah. Like, we yeah. didn't watch our own movies that goes, no, there's a reason. Because over the weekend, I believe, there was a thing in Russia called the Geek Picnic. And it, what they did is they had um, a bunch of different robotics and cyborgs and, uh, uh, and engineering and things going there. And people talking about how uh, cybernetics can be used in the future. And one of the things is that these guys made a giant robotic hand that's big enough that you know you can pick up cars and they watch how they were crunching cars and doing all these things i'm like do we really need that if there's a picnic that can get rained out i kind of think i want the geek picnic to get rained out because i don't trust cyborgs like that and terminator 2 comes out soon and i don't need to think that the cyborgs are going to take over i just it just seems like we're too good at making stuff that we long term don't know how to work <laughs> or what is going to happen and i think that's you know that's how everything starts is we make something then we go oh wait hey uh did you ever? That's did what you, you wanted. <laughs> did you see Ex Machina? The no. movie. Oh, that was so cool. Is it Machina or Machina? Machina. I okay. Think. <laughs> yeah. I like the way like you Machina. say it. It is bad. Yeah, yeah, that's, so, that's Spanish. That okay. was supposed to be a great movie. It's on my it is. my it's list good. of when it pops up. I can and I can watch it on Amazon Prime. I'll watch that. So. I feel so bad because there's some movies I really like. I know I need to add Jurassic Park into my itinerary for this week, or Jurassic World. I'm sorry, yeah. because it's one of those things that I think you really need to see or experience at least once on a big screen, 
And then there's some that are all basically story or character driven, so you can get away with waiting until it gets around sure. on oh, TV. Yeah. And Jurassic World's one of those ones. I'm like, oh, I gotta go make sure I have time to see this. Gotta see how big the dinosaur looks mm. on a big screen. Feel that that rush of does it seem like it's jumping out at me, you know, in 3D? This kind of movie, I think it matters if you oh, can see it. Oh, and it is yeah. in 3D too. Yeah. So being able to see it on a on an on a IMAX, even I think that this is the kind of movie that you're like, that's what this was made for. Yeah. And it, the story behind it, too, is amazing because it's a young independent filmmaker. Uh, I believe his name is Colin Trevino. Okay. Uh, he did Safety Not Guaranteed. I don't know if you've ever seen that, an independent film that caught Steven Spielberg's attention. So here's a guy who went from a budget of about 250000 to $250 million. Talk about and the so chance now, of a lifetime. Good and he him. hits a grand slam. He hits the biggest, second biggest oh, movie good Lord, ever yeah. uh, in uh, opening. So he's on his way. But I hope they continue to find new, fresh young, talent like yeah. that. If we're going to do reboots of movies, mm -hmm. that's what I hope that they do is they go, well, you know what? I was a fan of whatever it was, and here's how I can bring it to yeah. life and have a new vision and bring in a new audience instead of just slapping a title on something and having it not really pay you know, homage either to the old nun and not so fulfill a new audience. It's just things just fall flat so many times this year. The um, I mean, these days. The director has a scene, and you can see it on the TV trailers, where in this movie they introduce this gigantic underwater dinosaur, and there's a shark being dangled over the, it looks like a sea world kind of a thing at the theme park. So this huge underwater dinosaur comes out and chomps down on the shark and he's like oh good lord am i offending steven spielberg does he think this is me saying get out of the way buddy move I'm, sharks uh, i'm bigger and badder than your stupid little shark movie. it does seem a little like a little slap in the face but that's cool you had to have a water dinosaur and sharks are still scary we had two shark attacks like over the weekend oh, over or the last weekend. week so i'm yeah. like yeah i'm i'm still scared of sharks that's I, okay i think that's what puts it in perspective all these you know the shark is the big bad jaws and that's what his point in was every single movie it, it wasn't movie related he's like, what's yeah. the fearsome creature right. in our world right now? And look how it pales compared to this. Sharks and hippos. That's, that's why, the scariest things we've got right now. Sharks and hippos. That's why every single disaster movie, you always see a cop get smeared. Like, oh, here comes the tsunami mm. and the earthquake. And now, since 9-11, we have all seen the visual of the fire trucks getting smashed. Now that's in every disaster movie. you got to have fire trucks destroyed now. So. Uh, well, I mean, you can. You, I think people yeah. have been close enough to yeah. a fire truck where you can go, I understand yeah. the scale of yeah. it. Like, one of my favorite... Right. Horribly bad but awfully good um, sci-fi movies uh, is Pacific Rim. And Pacific Rim is one of those movies that is the most awesome dumb movie ever mm -hmm. because it's just visually amazing and all this stuff happens it has what you want for if you like cheesy sci-fi movies it's there's giant robots and then there's giant monsters you know kind of thing so you get your transformers and you get your uh your godzilla and you mash them together and you have a you know just awesomeness and there's a scene where one of the giant robots grabs a oil carrier like a yeah. giant <laughs> boat and smacks the uh the 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 Godzilla the giant lizard and yeah. you're like awesome like yeah. your inner seven year old just screams and just goes that's like the best up ever. A bat. yeah how impressed would you be if I told you Jennifer and I were at Lucas Films with Guillermo del Tormo Ooh. and sat in with the editors as they were making this. Oh, that was that's nice fantastic. That was, that was I was pulling it up, and I guess the sound is still tight in. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. So, I'm and he super went jealous. over. We spent, like, first of all, we spent a, a time just walking around pointing at the original E.T. bicycle, mm -hmm. the original Darth Vader costume. But then we got to chat with Guillermo for an hour as he's describing, you know, how the water is important and how it lands on the robots and, you know, the technology that was being invented just for Pacific Rim. So we left there all jazzed, and then when it tanked, we're like, ooh. See, and I liked it. I still really, I had a great time at Pacific Rim because it did some things that I thought made sense as a science fiction and fantasy movie fan. Where it's like, okay, I know that this is a, a, a crazy story. Yeah. Just set up what it is and that, just go, that's it, and move on. Yeah. Don't over explain it. Don't try and make it make life and real, make you know, sense in real life. What happens? There's going to be giant lizards that come through. Yeah. And the only way... Don't ask any more questions. The only way to combat them is, is two people and a giant robot. Done. And that's it. Don't, <laughs> don't give me too much time to think about it. A giant robot. Right. Yeah. This has to happen. And you go, 
Cool. And then just press on. Where was I? I didn't even know this movie existed. Pacific it came, Rail? It, it came oh. and went It came and fast. went, yeah. It, it was one of those movies that everybody in the geek world was like super excited for like a year. Like yeah. we were like, yeah. yeah, I can't wait till Pacific Rim. I was going to get here. And then it got here. We all went. We're like, nobody's going to believe us if we say we like that movie. Yeah. It's kind of... Like a wrestling <laughs> development well, season four. He, he made a stylistic choice and I think didn't help it was too dark you wanted it was to very see dark. better yeah i mean the lighting on it was too dark yeah it was so. it was very shadowy and we were there as he was making those decisions and we're like oh yeah, huh. i wish i could see it a little better so go go amazon prime or netflix yeah. pacific rim it's a yo know, the kids so, will like it yeah. and it's not Here, too scary for I'm the kids i'm gonna watch movies this week i have no kids yeah oh, oh, okay this hey, weekend yes uh, uh while we're still talking about that is guillermo benicio's brother i assume what guillermo del toro is he benicio del toro's brother uh, they might be related. I don't think they're brothers. Let's Google that. Yeah. I think it might be just a common name down there in Mexico. It's like, of it's not the, the bull. Only del Toro. It means literally of the bull. Guillermo <laughs> del Toro and Benicio del Toro. They might, you like know, it. they might be cousins. Let's find out. Anyway, I spent this weekend 12 hour days, Saturday and Sunday, acting yes. in a science fiction movie. How did that work out? Uh, I think I crushed it. Nice. <laughs> now, okay. Oh, they're not related. Okay, good. Yeah. I knew they were brothers, but I like, oh, are from not. Spain, one's from Puerto Rico. Puerto Rican. The, Benicio okay. was Puerto Rican. Lo siento. I thought uh, Guillermo was. Guillermo's from Spain. But I thought he lived in Mexico because he talks about. Huh, Maybe right. he did. We're looking. You know, That's we, so we're cliche. Both Googling, Googling Pick a it as French country. You want to be different, man? Come on. So the movie that you're in, S- Savage Sentinels, and it's uh, it's got interest. Uh, it's in Netflix's wheelhouse. One of the producers spent two weeks in Cannes lining up uh, other like Hulu and other people that are so into. They really want to see the pilot. Local producers. Local producers. A local crew. I was impressed. I mean, this thing. You know, I have they a, have excellent talent here. You well, know, as far as production crews, we have yeah. some. That's why they were trying. Like a lot of our production and actor friends are saying, if we can figure out the tax breaks, that, you know, shooting a film here, there's this was. Let me there's just, a lot let me of just, great things. Let me just tell you what this experience okay. was like. I had my own trailer. I had a trailer mm-hmm. that was air conditioned. I had a guy who kept going, "Do you need anything? Do you need Would you water? Like some craft Do you need diet? Do you have a cough? <laughs> Yeah. Do you need to? You know, there was craft services. Yeah. Just beyond the craft services. Wow. Do you? You have? A, I'll go run and get you uh, throat lozenges. What flavor do you want? But I'm like, dude. I'm, I had suddenly cherry, yeah. cherry throat lozenges. My own chair. They were fanning me. They were like, <laughs> that guy you hold my jacket and tie. You want someone from the concubine? You pick that one. <laughs> there was, and as you say, I was talking to the director Peter West, and I'm like, you know, I am surprised at how Hollywood. This production is the you had a director of photography who had an assistant director of photography you had three lighting people you had a director an assistant director as an assistant to the assistant director you and had, a sound this and, and about yep. yeah and mm-hmm. the sound guy hit his head his two people I mean there was 30 people so when I start having a meltdown on Saturday under the heat after six hours and forgetting my lines God! <laughs> I'm like, oh, God. Oh. Yeah, all those people are relying on you. Well, I yeah. was standing under the light for like 20 minutes, and I could feel my, you know, I started to get lightheaded, and then they're like, sound, <laughs> rolling. And I'm Speed. like, my brain is going, <laughs> what is my line? <laughs> I'm leading the scene, and I'm like, oh, what's my line? What's my line? Action! And I'm like, I'm, <laughs> s- I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just totally have spent, oh, that's okay, okay. We still rolling? Yep. Action. I mean, I, I can't remember <laughs> anything right now. I go, break, break. I'm like, Are you all right? Well, I'm like, I'm just lightheaded right now. Here's uh, director Peter West talking about the movie and describing it for us. The Savage Sentinels is uh, three regular people who can um, change into their spirit animal infused battle gear to fight demons. From a demon dimension, pretty ah. s- standard fare oh, yeah. TV show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like Guardians of the Galaxy, there'll be some humor with it. Right, and that's one of the things I wanted to do uh, in in working in a in a TV show uh, um, format versus a film format. Uh, I wanted to go with something that would be um, lighter and more fun to sort of uh, write in terms of experimenting with you know trying to make something funny without it telling jokes you know i am definitely working in a genre that's not uncommon <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, you know, I and I, I didn't even come at it from a superhero side. I'm not a big fan of superhero movies normally. I mean, I enjoy them. Uh, my co-writer is really, really into superhero uh-huh. movies, but I kind of mm-hmm. came at the Savage Sentinels more from martial arts films and you know Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Just uh, in, in terms of why I wanted to make, I honestly I never even watched Power Rangers. I, that was I was in college. <laughs> yeah, Power yeah, me too. Wasn't it wasn't watching, cool. I wasn't watching anything when you're, I was in college. I was like, you're both yeah, I was lying. In high school. You're lying. You loved the Power. <laughs> you wanted like, to be the no, pink one. I was in elementary. <laughs> no, whatever. It's it's a mixture of. Uh, Retired Power Rangers and Guardians of the Galaxy. I like that idea. It has, uh, you know what I'd never watch until last night? Uh, my son and wife and I gathered around. We watched five episodes of Doctor Who. Oh, you did? Good. From different seasons with okay. different yeah, Doctor oh, wow. Who's. Yeah, quite a contrast. And the newest one especially has the sass and humor of the Savage Sentinel project. So you caught up to yeah. Peter Capaldi, the newest yeah. one. You yeah. watched that one? Yeah. yeah. So we actually talked about our favorite, when we did um, your geek show this weekend, that was one of the things we talked about is our favorite Doctor Who companions, so the people that go along with them. So we went yeah. through five or six of those. Not even the Doctor the Doctor Who companion. Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. yeah. So we talked about the people. So if you were watching recently, then you would see Clara, and she was one of the ones that we um, uh, actually brought up this week as one of our... Um, one I of thought our her name pink. was Rose. Huh. Is there oh, a- so you're not to the new ones. Yeah, no, with Capaldi. Yeah. Isn't her name Rose? No, Rose is blonde, and she was with like two doctors uh, before. Oh, I saw that one too. Yeah, so the one, the, the most one, recent one with the, the, sh- the short blonde. bob hair. Yeah, that's Brown Clara. Eye. Are Clara. you? Do you two see how glazed over my eyes are? Don't care. That happens all the time. <laughs> Catch but up. But I'd heard so, so much about Doctor Who, and then after shooting all day on Sunday on this, you know, day two of filming, I'm like, you know. I got what that. Let's give one of these Doctor Who's a try. Is yes. downstairs in my new man cave screening room, <laughs> and I happened to see the episode one of the new season where the at the end of it, the old Doctor Who was calling the new Doctor Who to say, you know, be kind. The to regeneration, me. yes. Yeah, and so it, what they do is that because the the way that Doctor and, and Doctor Who is one of the longest uh, uh, sci-fi uh, science fiction shows that have been running ever. It started in 1963. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, this is our we're on our. Tw- 12th Doctor, 12th incarnation yes. of the character. And Peter Capaldi was a, a, a good score for him because he was replacing this character named Matt Smith, who was the youngest guy to play the Doctor, but very, very hard you throbbing. That, right, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you, does the 12th Doctor Who's Chuck count the film Doctor Who's or just the TV ones? Uh, I, I heard Doctor and then I heard Woo and I was out. <laughs> I, I mean, I remember the show from. 35 years ago yeah. everyone was into it that original it was so campy I'm like Ugh. it was campy and I think that's why I never it, got into it I'm like that yeah. looks dumb as hell and I don't want to see yeah. stupid badly yeah. made robots attacking yeah. a back, goofy looking Gene Wilder yeah. yeah yeah, yeah. but why part Count of the, the charm I think of it back then is that it was you needed more theatrical based actors yeah. because they didn't have yeah. this awesome CGI that we had. So they did have a lot of characters that were larger than life and were theatrical. Like it was the same thing as is performing to the back of the theater. So you had yeah. to have this, and I the suppose. stories were so interesting and they move a lot slower than what we're expecting on like modern day television yeah. but you did have these story arcs and you really got a chance to get to know all these characters and and it was just fun i was one of the first science fiction shows like my mom and i used to watch that show together because wow. they would play replay it on um when we still lived in arizona on our public tel- public television station and yep. so i've been watching it since i was a little kid yeah. it just feels to me like a bad garage sale the it early does. ones it does i have a uh... but I, the new ones got my attention i'm like oh because there is Special effects right. that for television is really cool. Mm-hmm. And yeah, the humor in the story arc was interesting and creepy and funny. Right. I wasn't expecting the humor. There's always, they all, all of them, even the more serious doctors have always had a, you know, a more, you know, had that humor based in some of the episodes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gramps, my grandpa, Lewis Gollop, was um, a newspaper reporter and he had a big story that broke and they did this show back in the day called The Big Story. Mm-hmm. And it was a big show back in the 50s. And Leslie Shame. Nielsen played an episode of... That's exactly what it was, yeah. Rusty. I was thinking of your voice exactly. That Leslie Nielsen played my grandpa in the episode about my grandpa. So it's funny to see Leslie Nielsen in like 1950 going, I'm Lewis Gullop. <laughs> and, but it, had this, it was really campy and it was yeah. really painful. And it's exactly like Doctor Who. Yeah. I mean, it, it didn't change in 20 years. It's the same kind of TV. Very bad effects, bad studio, black and white crazy yeah i yeah. think it's fun like to me i get really nostalgic when i watch that kind of thing and yeah. i'm fine with it but we talked about some mm-hmm. doctor who companions from back then and of course brought up to the the you know some of the most recent ones and just kind of covered a lot of territory so it was fun to us 
All right. Well, the four episodes I saw were good. Okay. And I saw two with the new guy, one with the guy just before him, mm -hmm. and one with the youngest. No, not was he the youngest? He he had Rose, the blonde haired woman with him and they were fighting a werewolf you're going slightly backwards be yeah. kind of thing so if you saw the most recent one with the yeah. white hair that's peter capaldi and he's yeah. the one that's currently doing it the yeah. one previous before him that was matt smith he's the youngest one he's the youngest he's okay. the youngest one and then right before him that was david Tennant. he's the one that was with rose or oh, okay. like so rose started so before him yeah so rose started before him she was the first companion. Write this down for me, Chuck. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll send it all to you. I'll send you a Venn diagram. That's all right. So Rose started, she was the first companion in the new reboot of gotcha. the series after it came all back. Right. Well, I recommend the new ones. I don't know about the old. Yeah, you can start with the new ones. Funky. You know, the ones that started in like 2009. Bad robots. Warning, <laughs> warning, Will Robinson. I will pick through those and show you the ones that are fun. All right. <laughs> hey, we uh, let's take a break. And then when we come back, we're going to get a little more serious. This uh, woman who claims to be black. What? And she is uh, like high up in the the president of the Spokane, Washington NAACP. Obama, uh, I blame Obama. Blame Obama. And then we got a <laughs> CNN anchor calling a guy who goes into a Dallas cop station brave and courageous. Yes, I heard okay. about that. Okay, and then Chuck, you want to update yes. the uh, how everything is settled down, and now it's all wonderful in Baltimore, yeah. or yeah. not? Yeah, yeah. Or completely the opposite of that? Exactly. Of what I just said. All right, <laughs> we'll take a break. We'll be right, 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 right back. The Twin Cities Hit Show. We'll be right back. Don't let your computer problems drive you mad. We are Mac Men, Minnesota's premier tech consultants and problem solvers for Macs, mobile devices, troubleshooting, training, and much more. No more dragging your computer all over town because we come to you. We love making house calls to your home or small business. Mac Men, call 612-345-8005. The Alive and Social Network is alive and growing. From the best in sports, music, movies, and beer, Alive and Social is what all the cool kids click on. Featuring characters like Radio Rebel Jeff DeBay, Star Tribune pundit Jim Suhan Unfiltered, and television veteran and handsome man Rusty Gatenby, you can also taste the Minnesota Pubcast with Jason and Molly. Join the band with Live Band Karaoke Night from legendary O'Gara's in St. Paul and the Live Music Showcase from Shamrocks. Yes, a live and social network does indeed rock and roll. The Jeff DeBay Show, Jim Suhan Unfiltered, the Rusty Gatenby Review, the Minnesota Pubcast with Jason and Molly, Live Band Karaoke, and Shamrock's Live Music Showcase. Join the fun. Be alive and social with the Alive and Social Network. The Rusty Gatenby Review is the entertaining show about entertainment from movies, music, and more. Award-winning TV guy Rusty Gatenby and his review is the podcast with the biggest cast in entertainment, part of the Alive and Social Network. You can get that Minnesota connection to Hollywood and beyond any time of the day or night simply by clicking on the RustyGatenbyReview.com. That's the RustyGatenbyReview.com, part of the Alive and Social Network. <laughs> You're listening to the Twin Cities Hit Show. Say it three times fast. We just dare you. I keep meaning to switch this promo out, but I just love this song. I love this song, too. <laughs> Gets yeah. me in a good mood. Yeah. You get me in a good mood. Really? Shannon, you get me in a good mood. Thank you. I love this well, song. That's good. Uh, we were talking all the um, TV shows and such. Busy weekend on TV. Yeah. Uh, we did. We forgot to mention that a character in Game of Thrones. Was... Spoilers! 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 If you didn't watch it, dude, you're gonna get your heart broken. That's all you need to go. Go watch it on your on your on your TiVo and your DVR. <laughs> like, Shannon, let's never watch DVD. It's already <laughs> spoilers. Don't tell everybody. 
<laughs> I mean, they're already interneting this. They don't and really that's don't why they it. keep saying, spoilers, uh, if it really bothers you, you're not going to like it. That's all I was going to say. You're and you, what you say you do watch uh, Game of Thrones? I watch it sporadically, you know, because I like, one, I want a dragon, and they have dragons. So if I could have a pet, like a made-up pet, I'd have a dragon. <laughs> but So I want to like that show, but I don't watch it. They don't bring the dragon in enough, though, do they? Not in my opinion, because I would just watch a show on dragons. Yeah. But it, it's... um. Including the cartoon, How to Train Your Dragon? Did I you like watch those. Yeah. I like those. I tried to get my son to like them, and he's like, nope, there's no wheels and they're not trains he doesn't care i didn't like the last one because i didn't buy that the mom get uh, left her son yeah but i thought that's very uh, disney they're always just uh just what happens that's are we gonna are we gonna play the spoiler from game of thrones it's all over the internet okay all right if you don't mind you know it, I, here's the way my feeling of, of game of thrones is and why i can't watch it more often is that we were talking earlier about how um Computers are awesome, and things look realistic now. And so Game of Thrones happens to be such a violent show that we are really good at portraying violence now, and I don't find it entertaining to watch people get tortured, burned at stake, all that stuff. Even though I know they put it in the story for a reason, it's not fun to what me to watch. What about a Quentin Tarantino movie? I don't watch those either. I Ever. haven't. I've never seen Pulp Fiction all the way through. Oh, come on. You know, I just, you know, That's I, the only I just want to check out. That's I know. the masterpiece of it. Right. I just check out. Exactly. Together. I check out when it's like, oh, I'm like too much. I didn't see um, Inglorious Black Bastards because I heard about the scalping scene at the beginning. I'm like, I'm going to have to watch oh, that through my fingers yeah, and I'm not watching it. So uh, that's just, everybody has their Django hot buttons. Chain. Haven't seen it. Yeah. Haven't seen it. And so there's some violence in that. Right. And yeah. that's how it is, is that I that's my particular hot button the, is that I don't need to watch that in the my opening th- of Django is incredible. Yeah. With yeah. Christoph Waltz. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so spoiler alert, they kill a main character. Yes. And they do that over and over and over again. A so beloved now, main character. So now it's character. like if I was a fan, because I've only seen a couple of episodes. Again, there's too much TV to keep up with everything. Yes. And Game of Thrones is one that I just went, wait, who's talking to who and what kingdom is That's where? That's a difficult show to watch because the it is the keeping track of the characters is very difficult. They are yeah. also a very we'll call it mumbly cast. Like if yeah. you like, it's a show that you kind of have to watch actively because it's a lot of and then this happened and, 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 and you don't know what they're saying. I'm kind of convinced there's a whole group of people who are like claiming to know what's going on just to be cool. Oh, yeah, totally. I love that show. And that's, oh, yeah. I don't know the I'm name. Like, uh, I call bullshit. You don't even know what kingdom. Yes, I do. I know there's Westeros. I know there. <laughs> I know I know a couple of buzzwords. <laughs> yeah. And then I know, and then I watch this, This there's the internet series called Gay of Thrones. It's a funnier or oh. die show. And I catch up that way. And oh, Gay of Thrones, it is about, it, it's a hairdresser that watches it all. Hey. But he calls the characters what I would call them in my head. And so it's like, um, the main character, one of the main characters, she's super, super blonde, and I, she's one of the few I did know her name, and now I can't think of it. Cersei, and he calls her Christina Aguilera. And I go, yes. And then it's like, so Christina Aguilera and Solange did this, and then that happened, and then Baby Galapagos did this. Like the way he describes them, I can keep track of them in my head versus what their real names are. So uh-huh. the main character that they killed off this season is one of the names that you would remember. So, but. Now he's gone, and I think that you know you. From my friends that are Game of Thrones fans, they do have their heart broken over and over and over again with yeah, the show, and that's what like, they do. Is like, here's a rug that you got comfortable with. Let me pull it out from under you. But I'd be and like, that's what the okay, show that's one too many times. Screw you. Here's a moment of Game of Thrones. Oh my god, girl. At the beginning, you had Munchers doing his best shark tank to try to keep Sir Carlisle in business, but Christina was all like, I'm out. Then Blonde Cher is in the dungeon and she was getting tortured by a twisted Kathy Najimy. Well, every nun learns to use a weapon. Hers was a ladle. <laughs> oh my god, and things are just not getting any better for Blonde Cher when Bill Nye, Westeros science guy, breezes on So they're on legitimately and updating the Yes, oh. yes, it's fantastic. So it tells you about the previous episode in ways that a layman can keep track of, and I love it. Gay of Thrones on Funny or Die. That was, oh boy. <laughs> season five, episode eight yes, recap. Yes. What season are we on? Season five, and we just had the, um, the, Ep- the season finale. Oh. Oh, that was the finale. Yes. So everybody's like, all right, I guess I'll keep track of things over there. All right, so before the weekend began, but there's new news this morning, a woman out in Spokane, Washington? Yes. Claiming to be black. The uh, bad part is she's not really black. Rachel Dozel, she's actually the um, president of the Spokane chapter, the NAACP. And um, it turns out her family, her mother and her father, came out and said, you know what, she's done great work as the, you know, in the NAACP, but she's been saying that she's black and she's not black. 
Ooh. She's white, and here's the pictures of her when she was just blonde. You know, these, these there's these blonde haired, blue-eyed photos of her that they released. And now and you're, everybody's lining it up. And now she's been saying that she's, for a number of years, has, has been saying that she's black. Dark she's got dark very hair, she's very tan. Hair. She's been saying that she's biracial. You know, and, and, and there are reports that say that she's, you know, she's said that her father was black and she's this and she's that. And and uh, where I find the story frustrating, like she was supposed to, they were, there was going to be a... Um, uh, a meeting of the NAACP today, which she canceled, right. and they were expecting Feeling her to the make heat. Well, and I think that you know the heat has been going on a number of days her now, and they thought that she would make a a statement yeah. today um, her at this thing. Adopted black brother now has come out and said, "Yeah, she told me not to blow her cover." Right, ah. because ah. she does have um, her younger brothers and sisters who are adopted are you know black, and so there are so many things. Number one, how did you ever think you were going to get away with it? It was going to come to light that you're not black. Right. That is so stupid. And number two, you don't necessarily have to be black to be in the position no, you're in. No, she's done some great so work, a, it sounds like. It's an unnecessary like. lie. Oh God, and now I have it's, a problem with it. It's not even it's a black or white thing at this point. It's an integrity issue. And so I want to hear her reasoning exactly. for lying. Because now it feels to me like you're just lying. You can have a supportive... Uh, you can be supportive of a culture without being specifically in it. You know, she could say, you know, if she had some story that was like, I try not to see color because I think that we all technically came from the same corner of Mesopotamia. And so there is really no black or white or we're all black. If she had some position that was like that or I choose to present this way because I am in support of the culture or I grew up in a certain background, there could be reasonings behind it. But if it's just you had a chance to put down on a piece of paper that you were black and you just started saying it, that's a lie. That's just, you know, using, okay. being crazy. Well, I forgot to tell you guys. This weekend I did, a, I did one of those projects where you do your research, your genealogy. Mm -hmm. I'm also not black. I'm sorry. I've been lying. <laughs> I'm sorry. I am not black. Yeah. Don't Shut hit me. me. Don't get pissed off, Ruth. I'm sorry. I mean, and as are, you, are you doing the IQ test today? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I want that verified too. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I find it very frustrating because it does sound like she did some really great work in the areas that she worked in, and that could have been done anyway. And now it calls all of the stuff that she did in the question as here's, well. Uh, here's a moment from uh, CBS updating us today. Good morning. Rachel Dolezal has been at the center of a firestorm here ever since her parents came forward uh. last week and accused her of lying about being African American. Now Dolezal is the subject of multiple investigations here, including two here at City Hall, and some members of her NAACP chapter are insisting that she resign. Rachel Dolezal says she has not misled anyone about her race. If I was asked, I would definitely say that, yes, I do consider myself to be black. So is that a gray area? I consider myself to be black instead of saying I am black? <sighs> I say bullshit. You're lying. I do. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. I, I I call BS on that as well. Yeah, we'll hear her parents. And, uh, but the like city council is now exploring well, whether she should be removed as chairwoman of a commission that oversees misconduct complaints against police officers. Dolezal checked off numerous boxes, including African American, on her employment form. Her parents, Ruth Ann and Larry Dolezal, remember their daughter as a blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl. Yeah. I am her birth father. I'll always be her birth father. So her true birth ethnicity is Caucasian. Our daughter is primarily German and Czech and of European descent. Ezra Dolezal, one of her African-American adopted siblings, spoke to CBS affiliate Krem by phone. She took me aside and just told me not to blow her cover. She's just like trying to say, like, she, people raised this for her entire life, even though she grew up a white, privileged uh, person up in Montana. We can start the week with a fresh focus on justice issues. Dolezal was elected president of the NAACP Spokane chapter last November. She holds a master's degree from Howard University and teaches Africana studies at a local university. Smart woman. NAACP member Katara Johnson is organizing a protest against Dolezal that has created a petition calling on her to take a leave of absence. As I wow. would as well. I have no problem with her. You know, I'm, uh, you, you can be a very learned person and a scholar about a culture that you are not physically about. But you, don't, but you don't get to lie and say that. If you're, there's other professors that are, you know, white and don't present that they are African American that still know a lot about the culture and teach those classes. And so maybe that made it more, you know, I, was she saying that, you know, is it going to come out that she's 
she thought that if she took on this persona and did that, that that would make it easier for her to get these jobs. Then again, that goes back you to an integrity issue. It's interesting. If you look at her pictures, I mean, as a kid, she was very blonde. Yeah. And you take that same look and you fast forward it 30 years and she really... So is she perming morphed. her hair and dyeing yeah. her hair and spray yeah. tanning? And well, all she that. could still yeah. do all that, but yeah. then if it, if it comes down to it and somebody puts a box in front of you that says, check what ethnicity you are, yeah. then you need to either just say, I protest this whole right. process and I check all, yeah. or you check the one yeah. that you are. Her brother came out saying that uh, he thought that basically her look was... Dude, we just okay. played it. <laughs> are you joking? Are you <laughs> effing with us? Totally joking. I wasn't. I wasn't. Uh, you I was. You yeah. were not joking. I was not joking. And so, that's uh, what I think is the frustrating it's a good thing show, about Chuck. it. Chuck, you should listen sometime. No, I don't. I don't. I don't know how to. I told you, I don't know how to find podcasts. Yeah. I have made jokes before because uh-huh. my little boy is biracial. I have made jokes before where I said, you know what? I think that we have become such a stew here in America that even now I'm African American and pretty much regular black girl, I'm still a combination of stuff because I happen to be part Creole. So that's just stew in general. There is a lot of pieces that are in there. So I made jokes that I should have my little boy go, just check all of them. Just circle every, just fill in every bubble, baby. Just circle them all. The president of the United States, his mom was white. So why are we saying we have our first black president? We could be saying... Convenient. He's... Another white president, yeah. we could be saying. And that's not the way that we work. It's 50-50. Like, yeah. We could be saying we still have a white president. Let's get to where we're going in Europe, where we're dropping sexuality as a pronoun. Let's drop race as a word and just say and we're razors all razors to shave our armpits <laughs> and legs. Yeah, so don't tell Courtney between that. Yeah, I'm serious. I mean, that, this, this is ridiculous. We are a country made up of mutts, and it's 400 years of right. muttdom. Let's just face the fact that we are mixed people, all of us. And what Chuck just said, I would think, would be valid on uh, uh, from the from Miss Dolezal's point. If she was saying that, if she had said yeah. in 2005, no. "Hey, I think that race we should begin to try and transcend from it. I'm from now on. This is how I'm identifying myself, and here's what it is." If there was that kind of statement, that's different than you just slipped in there and started saying, "No, nah, just from now on, I'm just going to say black." I will not be surprised. And here's what I'd be doing if I was investigating. I'd be going back to Howard University. Go. I'd like to see the transcripts. Did she actually graduate? Did she even yes. go to this college? It's an in, you know, now it's how, an integrity. Because I think this is a behavior. I think it's a pathological thing because there. It's just it's an unnecessary lie that right. she did. Right. It wasn't right. needed. Herein lies the problem too, and I don't want to throw media under the bus, but media really uh, uh, keeps this going forward because every time a story like this comes out, and they're, oh, we're behind it. Let's talk about it. Let's blog about it. And that just drives the conversation. We're talking about it. I yeah. know we are and media. We are. So we are. <laughs> anyway. And, and to be honest, if we could just stop visiting it, it would stop. Entering every yeah, level I'm not do of that. our culture. This woman's insane. I'm going to yeah. continue to talk about her until she gives me a reason to say no. So come up with. I want to hear the explanation. I am, you yeah. know, I'm disappointed that she canceled this meeting because she doesn't have the power to do it, and that's why the people in the in the, the chapter of the NAACP that she's the president of are going. Wait a minute, you don't get to yeah. cancel the meeting. You cannot come. Yeah. But we're still having this <laughs> yeah, meeting, yeah, yeah. you know, because this is a meeting that transcends just what the president is. We would have a meeting anyway. Well, Chuck, are you familiar with the uh, shooting that happened in Dallas? The guy went into yes. it. What was the story? Why did he go in there and shoot, and who did it? Ooh. Yeah, um, let me. I wasn't prepared to talk, but I'll tell you what, this well, guy. Because, I was getting yeah. to Frederico Whitfield's apology and whether we're buying it. Oh, yeah. 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 Well, here's the, here's the background. This guy uh, goes out, buys a uh, retired, uh, used, armored SWAT vehicle, drives oh, up a to. A vehicle, nice. Yes, yeah. yeah. He drives up to Where the... Where do you get them? Uh, you know, there's a picture of it where it was for sale somewhere down south. I just clicked Wally on Wally McCarthy's? It, it, there's a place like that. It was a used car lot, and they're, you know, former SWAT vehicle. And here's a picture of the thing with the uh, racks on the side where the SWAT you know, guys stand oh, on. Man. There's you armored know shooting ports. Are buy right. that, yes. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure it was a novelty for some... Like, here's a novelty in our great armored vehicle. Oh, wow. No. This guy buys it, drives up to Dallas Police Headquarters, and... Uh, what was Saturday his morning. Beef? Um, over there Saturday morning. He was mad because of child custody issues. Uh, uh, Grant, I'm not looking at the news story right now, but he was mad because child custody issues. Uh, the, he felt the police had a, uh, some say in him losing some custody of his kids. Correct. So right. he shows up, plants bombs around the police station, bombs inside this armored vehicle, and starts shooting at the police station. And the, the pictures I've seen are horrendous. I mean, he had uh, yeah. obviously semi-auto rifles, and he was just throwing rounds downrange like what crazy. What was the end of that? Uh, who, uh, uh, how did that shake out? No cops got seriously injured. None right. got killed, and they really? ended up in a car chase with him, mm-hmm. um, where they finally box him in, and there's a whole bunch of uh, 
Shots fired. There was a standoff yep. for hours. They mm-hmm. called SWAT in. Um, mm-hmm. They brought brought some bomb robots in because they were concerned they had explosives. And he said the van was laced with C4, or not laced, but uh, packed with C4. Yeah. So they um, eventually it came to be uh, that a sniper from the SWAT team was able to shoot him through the windshield mm-hmm. using a 50 caliber rifle, which, by the way, Research the used SWAT vehicle you buy, because that thing isn't well armored. If a 50 cal <laughs> round could take you out through the window. Now, but, see, this is the part where I'm just like, okay, now you went down this little weapons rabbit hole that I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. so, all I know is that there was a the weapons... the woman who wanted to nuance the entire history of Doctor exactly. Who. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just saying that there are things I don't know. seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Huh? Uh, yeah. Caliber, huh? Well, yeah. okay, so here's what happened. CNN anchor reporting on the situation. I believe it was still ongoing. I think the standoff was happening. Here's what... Uh, Frederica Whitfield had to say about it. Police expressed that there might be four, and then they dialed it back to possibly one. But in your view, you still believe an operation like this has now spanned 18 miles. Uh, it was uh, very courageous and brave, if not crazy as well, to open fire on the police headquarters, and now you have this scene, this standoff. What was she thinking? I felt what? like, okay, because she, she wasn't trying Whoa. to praise I, did him. Did I hear that out of context? I mean, first time I've actually no, heard it. No, it's in yeah. context, but I felt like in the heat of the moment that she meant, wow, this dude had balls to drive up on yeah. cops is what she really yeah. meant. Yeah, okay. And it came out as... It's, you know, they, you know, because I understand it like courageous implies positivity that yeah. you are in support of yeah. what he did. Yeah. And it sounds and brave like too. exactly what she meant. Cool was, hardy. Yeah. Cool hardy. So she meant Balls. who would do that? Yeah, you know, like, wow, the nerve of Some and it came out courageous and brave. That's well, why yeah. she went. I didn't I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I mean, she sort of apologized. Have you seen I, it? I, no, I mean, maybe take okay, okay, listen to okay, the show. Okay, I teased it before we listen to the show. Here we go. One more time, though. You can hear it in context. Police expressed that there might be four, and then they dialed it back to possibly one. But in your view, you still believe an operation like this has now spanned 18 miles. Uh, it was uh, very courageous and brave, if not crazy as well, to uh, open fire on the police headquarters. Yeah. And now you have this scene, this standoff. All right. So here is her apology, and what do we think of it? And yesterday, during a segment on the Dallas Police Department attack, I used the words courageous and brave when discussing the gunman. I misspoke and in no way believe the gunman was courageous nor brave. And I'll be right back. And I'll be right back. I give her this because I feel like she said it and then people ran up and said, Here's a dictionary, you know, kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then here's a thesaurus. Yeah. Here's the words you should have used instead of courageous and brave. Here's what, my first impression. Was, she has big balls <laughs> to do her apology so flippantly. Yes. Yesterday, okay. yeah. yesterday I had a run of my nylons, and I'm sorry <laughs> I should have had a better pair. I'll be right back. Yeah, Listen yeah, to yeah. the tone here again. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it is very... Agreed. It doesn't seem to match the gravity of the situation. And yesterday, during a segment on the Dallas... I like, you know... Yeah, I don't like her tone. Uh, no, I mean, that's that's the first thing that struck me. You very, wanted her to be more contrite? More like, like, holy okay. shit, people. Yeah. That was a... Oh, yeah. My bad. Wait, she my bad. Before you play it, she doesn't even break character from news anchor. Yeah. Just very blah, 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 blah. Yeah, like you it said. Was it's like, just, but yeah. isn't that what news anchors do? That's what makes... Because Brian mm. Williams got busted, and he's like, hey... No, but Sorry, he, I got busted. No, not I, at first. His first yeah. one, he did oh, yeah. not sound like. Because he figured he could beat it at that point. Yeah. When you know you, they had you. Come All on. All right, so here she is. Yesterday, I had like gum on my teeth, and I'm really sorry. And I'll be right back. Here we go. And yesterday, during a segment on the Dallas Police Department attack, I used the words courageous and brave when discussing the gunman. I misspoke. Not a big deal. And in no way believe the gunman was courageous nor brave. And I'll be right back. And I'm here. The teeth sucking probably yeah. didn't help. But do you think that she's like, come on now, y'all know I'm not really on this guy's side. It would have would made you feel better if she said it like that. Maybe. I, I, Something. T- I that think it? the tone okay. needed to be yeah. more... Yeah. Uh, let me take a moment here, first yeah. of all. I am so, so sorry. sorry. I really yeah. messed up yesterday. I was stretching for words. She was like throwing it off. And then part of me was like, oh, okay, well, maybe if you act like it's not a big deal, maybe everyone will treat it like it's not a big deal. But I'm like, but... But it is kind of a big deal. It was a big, I mean, if, that's a, I think that's not necessarily a career ending no. blunder, but it's definitely one of those, you aren't going to get the next promotion because now if, you know, if a chair opens up, that's a bigger, you know, a bigger market, a bigger this, you know, a bigger show, are you going to go, no, she's the one that said this and everybody's going to play that clip over and over and over again. Here's the problem. These words, these people say, 
people hang on them. They really do. And so, you know, there's an interesting article in uh, Hot Air or whatever that is. Um, but the guy kind of breaks apart her, her statement and then her apology. But people, <laughs> people hang on these things. So you got to watch your words. Well, yes, yeah. you do. We all yeah. need to watch our words. But yeah. you're also human. And yeah. yeah. Russ, you work with a lot of anchors. They're really good at reading, not always good at the off the cuff. <laughs> Thus, and that's Ron it. Burgundy. And yeah, little... there's lots of, you know, and so I try to cut them some slack sometimes and go, wait a minute, now that you had to turn your brain on, it sometimes your brain goes awry. I just happen to be in a job that I get called on the carpet less when I say something stupid because it's not my job to be an authority necessarily. Well, I feel like what she did is as bad as a guy who's like sitting on a, a live show who's not even paying attention to the other two hosts are talking, and then yeah, chimes in with nonsense. No, no, I don't even know. And she only did this once so far. You yeah. do that every morning. Oh, every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Multiple times. Hey, every morning, Rusty uh, goes, I hey, just said that. Okay, <laughs> and then if I can just, I want to talk about something. Did you guys hear what happened in Dallas? We're, we're at time right now, so <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. we're not going to talk about Dallas. Yes. No. Oh. He is Actually, neither courageous did. nor brave, <laughs> but he is uh, a person he that unfortunately had, and he and, and and just like the guy in Dallas, Chuck has mental health issues. Yeah, we could save that 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 piece I was going to do for tomorrow. It's going to be we? a lengthy discussion. All right, yeah, because okay. we're not going to have time for that. Uh, we... So go ahead and tease it. What are we going to talk about yeah, tomorrow? What are we then? Talk about tomorrow? Uh, what's going on in Baltimore? <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, oh yeah. yeah. Things have all quieted down Things now. There's no problem. Or the opposite. Yeah. Well, no, the police are finally uh, controlling themselves, and we'll talk about the results of that. They pulled back, and yeah. yeah. Well, they're, no, they're just doing the right thing. No more murders to... at all yeah. in Baltimore. Yeah. Or the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about that hey, tomorrow. Hey, remember, by the way, Third Street Brewery. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Delicious beer. You can not drink a Third Street Brewery in your blue and white cab. You can just be sneaky about it. Don't get caught. Um, and they don't like that at Third Street Brewery or the Blue and White Cab Company. <laughs> we're, we're wanting to keep our sponsor. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. let's okay. not. Ins- That's why I'm telling them to uh, drink, drink, drink sneakily. I mean, responsibly. <laughs> and always visit the Chart House. And yes. that's so. We, we, anyone tomorrow? We're going to talk Baltimore, I guess. Yeah, we're going to talk Baltimore. We do not have guests tomorrow. We do not have guests. Wednesday, we have comedian Mike Brody. Very nice. And uh, in the meantime, I think what we should do is that we should all go and like the Savage Sentinels Facebook fan page and connect uh, that to our Twin hey. Cities Hit Show page so we can learn more about the movie that Rusty there is. There you go. Yeah. Was, uh, it's actually a pilot for a TV show. Oh, there we go. So, so. we get to see that and we can yeah. keep track of that yeah. and follow yeah. it along and as it, as it is released, hopefully we can all make sure that we're ready to watch it. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. Oh. We uh, make it a good Monday. We'll see you guys tomorrow. All right. Go walk your dinosaur. <laughs> Literally. I said I'd be a-